This week we were gifted with lots of exciting new music and as we look forward to the rest of 2018 there's plenty more on the horizon. While some artists have scheduled releases we can mark on our calendars, some have chosen a more mysterious path, dropping vague hints via Twitter and Instagram, confusing both fans and critics alike. Regardless of how, where and or when these albums finally reach us, we can't wait to listen. Here are the 20 albums Paste is most looking forward to in 2018. And in the meantime, check out which albums made our best of 2017 list right here. Blood Orange 8, TBD last summer, Dev Hines teased fans with an Instagram pic of him in the studio, announcing that he was currently working on Blood Orange album 4. We know next to nothing about this record. Hines has stayed pretty mum on the subject since, but after 2013's Cupid Deluxe and 2016's Freetown Sound were ready for more genre-bending brilliance and impressive guest stars, Hines has collaborated with the likes of Debbie Harry and Carly Rae Jepsen. The Breeders' Date, Ma. 2. What's most exciting about the first record from The Breeders since 2008 is that it's the first LP with a last splash era lineup in 25 years. Kim and Kelly Deal, Josephine Wiggs and Jim McPherson will officially reunite March 2nd with All Merv. On lead single, Wait in the Car, Kim Deal showcased her always awkward relationship with expression, I always struggle with the right words, meow, 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 meow. Listen to the album's blunt title track here. Car Seat Headrest Date, Feb. 16 Car Seat Headrest's next album isn't exactly new, but it will certainly be fresh. Will Toledo has given his 2011 band camp release Twin Fantasy a total makeover, and it's out Feb. 16 on Matador. We love the sleek, shadowy look, and perfectly purposeful awkward dancing in the band's new video for Nervous Young Inhumans, directed by Toledo. Frank Ocean Day, TBD How Frank Ocean finds time to write new music in between hanging out with his bestie Brad Pitt, we don't know, but hey, we're not as talented as he is. Whether or not he'll release the follow-up to 2016 Sweeping Blonde this year is very TBD. The only hint we have to go on is this Tumblr post from late last year, in which Ocean offered that maybe fake quote from an interview he hasn't given yet him. We're hoping for the best. Gorillaz date TBD last year, Damon Albarn and Gorillaz released The Politically Fueled Humans, the first album since 2010. This time they aren't taking much time off. We're working on another Gorillaz album that we're going to be releasing in 2018, the band's Jamie Hewlett confirmed in late 2017. We're keeping our eyes and ears peeled for more details. Jack White date, TBD Jack White's last solo record was 2014's Lazaretto, and there have been rumblings of a follow-up since last month when White released a sound collage called Servings and Portions from My Boarding House Reach. This week, White confirmed he will release a new album in 2018, and it is in fact titled Boarding House Reach. The record's release date has yet to be announced, but in the meantime, we have two brand new singles to tide us over. Justin Timberlake date, Feb. 2 We only have to wait a few more weeks to find out if Justin Timberlake's new persona related to Man of the Woods, his first album in five years, is a joke or not. So far, it seems like Timberlake is totally serious about learning to embrace the merits of fresh air and flannel, despite the slick, futuristic vibes of his brand new, filthy, video. We're curious to find out what Timberlake is really up to, and if his new material will ever match the brilliance of 2007's future sex, love sounds. Karl Marx date, Feb. 23 Karl Marx, the supremely loud trio from Boston, makes sludgy rock that tackles sophisticated topics like life, death, and finding happiness in even the darkest corners. Adventure, the first single from the forthcoming third LP, Universal Care, is intense and expansive, yet finished with the utmost delicacy. Kanye West date, TBD Kanye West says his new album will be called TurboGraph 16. He also said 2016's The Life of Pablo would be called So Help Me God, Swish, Waves, and probably a dozen other titles before settling on the final one. And of course, he kept working on Pablo after it came out, so the question is, will Kanye's new album even be out when it's released? TBD indeed. Lucy Dacus date, Ma. 
to Richmond, Virginia, songwriter Lucy Dacus made a big splash with her 2016 debut, No Burden, after the confessional lyrics of Garage Blues propulsion of its lead single, I Don't Want To Be Funny Anymore, catapulted her straight to indie rock stardom. That record's follow-up, Historian, arrives March 2nd via Matador. Its first single, Night Shift, is tragic, beautiful and heroic. My Bloody Valentine Day TBD last year, My Bloody Valentine's Kevin Shields teamed with Brian Eno from the shimmering nine minutes, only once away my son, raising the hope the Shields might get back in the studio for a follow-up to 2013's MBB. Then he told Pitchfork that the prospects of a new MBB album in 2018 were 100%. That's enough confirmation for us. Or date Feb. 16 gleefully ask you Montreal indie rock wonder kinds or to return Feb. 16 with room inside the world, the long-awaited follow-up to 2015's Sunday coming down. In the meantime, frontman Tim Darcy made the solid solo LP Saturday Night impressive first single These Three Things, finds the band heavily embracing electronics and emphasizing Darcy's signature vocal swagger. Palm Date, February 9th Philadelphia Art Rock is Palm are one of the more inventive bands making music today, thanks to their experiments with bizarre melodies and disjointed rhythms. The set to release Rock Island on Feb. 9 via Car Park Records, and first single, Pearly, is a lush and poppy take on the signature brand of Strange. Screaming Females Date, Feb. 23 The New Jersey Garage Rockets have never stopped churning out great records, even if frontwoman Marisa Paternoster has doesn't been doing quite as much screaming recently. A new album, All at Once, is out February 23rd on Don Giovanni. Lead single, Black Moon, starts out fast and furious with Paternoster's signature guitar wail, while second single, Glass House, goes for the multi-tonal dramatic epic, equal parts pretty and pummeling. Shopping Day, January 19th London's Shopping Make Clean, upbeat post-punk reminiscent of bands such as The Raincoats and The Slits. The official body, at Jan. 19, promises even more smart, nostalgic dance tracks for our modern times. Soccer Mommy Day, March 2nd We deeply impressed with Soccer Mommy's gorgeous, slightly fuzzy sounds, and can't wait for the Nashville singer-songwriter's debut to arrive on Mar. To your Dog, the first single from Clean, finds Sophie Allison making a bold statement of independence, I don't wanna be your fucking dog, Superorganism Date Ma. 2 Superorganism, the absurdly fun pop collective based in London, though its members hail from around the globe, will mark their official arrival Ma. 2 with a self-titled record via Domino after releasing four joyously wobbly singles. The recent Pace Studio session marked the very first American performance, and was one of our favorites from last year. Tune Yards Date Jan. 19 Meryl Garbus has come a long way in four albums, from the super-looped Afro-funk of 2009's Bird Brains and 2011's WHOKILL to the more polished production of 2014's Nicky Knack. Her new release with constant collaborator Nate Brenner, I Can Feel You Creep Into My Private Life, keeps the programmed beats and playful multi-part harmonies firmly intact. The perfect vintage beats of Look At Your Hands makes us glad that the wait for the duo's new 12-track collection is almost over. US Girls Date, February 16th US. Girls is the Toronto-based project of Meg Remy, who's assembled a new eight-piece band around her forthcoming sixth album, in a poem Unlimited, at Feb. 16 via 4 AD. If Velvet for sale and second single, Pearly Gates, are any indication, the record will offer a sleek, elegant blend of electronics, hip-hop and indie rock. Vampire Weekend at TBD Last September, Ezra Koenig tweeted that the new Vampire Weekend album was 80% done, but that the last 20% is always the hardest. With a rumored working title of Mitsubishi Macchiato, that new album should be on its way sometime this year. It will be the band's first without multi-instrumentalist and producer Rostam Batmangle, who left the band in 2016 and made an excellent solo album in 2017, so we're especially anxious to hear what a Rostam-less VW sounds like.